please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Carly Kloss. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Carly. How Hi. are you? I'm so good. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, and bless you. I've, Thank you for your time. Oh my gosh, it, this has been the only thing getting me through. Uh, you know, these long days is watching your live stream. So I'm so excited to be on it with you. Oh, bless. Where are you, Carly? Can you tell us where you are? I'm in New York. Was... Do you do you hear that rainstorm outside? It's the crazy. The thunder is. If you all could see this, it is rain. It's beyond thunder. raining. It's thunder, lightning, and it's just unbelievable. But you can't hear it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of surreal though in the city. I um, I've I've been in the countryside. Uh, for for most of the past weeks, and just came back most. to get some things, and um, it's surreal being here in the city. It's this ghost town. Mm -hmm. How are you managing? Um, it's for me. It's really about the mind, yeah. and keeping the mind balanced and light and positive. Yeah. That's you know. And everything else will follow. I love that you've been doing a lot of live streams and workouts, and I've been doing the same, just trying to kind of stay positive, stay light, stay focused. Um, you know, when there's so much heaviness going on, uh, and and you know, I think it's. I mean, I can't say that I don't need the. I would love to have a chiropractor because it's gonna. Kylie, we're gonna have so many bones that need adjusting. That you know, know. it's like. But you know, now it's like machines. They've got machines that massage the lower back. They've got machines that massage the <laughs> upper back. So, so it's all these gadgets that my lovely trainer, Joe Holder, has been sending. But, um, so tell me something, Carly, because yes. I was really looking forward to you as a guest today because I don't know your complete story mm. and I want to know it and I want everyone else to know it. And I just know you started at young age, around about the same time yeah. I was discovered. So could yeah. you please tell us where did you come from in the United States of America and how did it all start for you? So I was born and raised in St. Louis. I was born in Chicago, grew up in St. Louis uh, in the same small town as our very dear mutual friend Derek Glassberg. Derek, uh, who, Derek, we love you. We love and, you, Derek. Yes, and um, and I grew up in St. Louis, and it, it's such a big part of who I am. Coming from the Midwest, I think the kind of I don't know small town uh, that I grew up in was really such a special place. Um, I really am close with my family. I still am really close with all my best friends from growing up, and. I was not planning on working in fashion in any capacity, uh, much so less what starting did you want a modeling career. So I wanted to be a doctor or a kindergarten teacher. That was my life plan. And then one day I was walking in the mall, I was 13 years old, and I was stopped by these scouts named Jeff and Mary Clark. And they asked that I, if I'd ever thought about modeling, and that was so out of even the realm of my of possibilities, or even what I was thinking about at the time. And um, long story short, two years later, when I was 15, I walked in New York Fashion Week for Calvin Klein as an exclusive, and wow. it just overnight kind of started a career. But tell me about that. So you walked, Carly, can you just go a bit to your right? So I want, yes. I want everyone to see all of you. Yes. So you walked in Calvin Klein when you were 15. Can you yes. tell us about that particular trip? Because I understood that you came in, did the show, and left back to school. Was that, can you yeah. explain me? Yeah. So I had such a kind of surreal beginning to my career. So the same week that I started high school was the same week that I walked in my very first runway show. And I, Monday, started high school, was finding my way, finding my locker, finding the gym. And by Thursday, I was on a plane to New York at meeting the designer of Calvin Klein. And I booked this show and I booked an exclusive. And I didn't understand the magnitude of that at the time. 
but you know, I stayed the weekend in New York and I did looks. And, what designer and I, was that then? Was that Francisco? Francisco Costa. Okay. And um, it, it, you know, so interesting, Naomi, because I, you know, you started so young. I'm sh I'm curious, your it's about the same, this around the same. It was I mean, a whole new yeah. world that was so foreign. But from my kind of thing my... is, how did you balance to go? I mean, that's a big week, Carly. Yeah. School, <laughs> so, high school, and totally straight into New York Fashion Week. It was that's crazy, and I was just trying to hold on, and and it happened so fast, and so I was just kind of for those. I mean, emotionally, school, how did you deal with that? I really, com I think I compartmentalized kind of my high school identity. And then I would get on a plane and I would come to New York and I would work with, you know, the best in the world at their craft. And I know, you know, I know Stephen absolutely adored you and you worked a lot with Stephen and still do. Oh my gosh, I've Can you tell us a bit about, this is Stephen Mizell we're talking about. Can you tell us who also was partly, yes, from as my career oh my gosh. held out? I, I feel like um, playing man, I'm curious if you feel the same way. I feel like I learned how to be a model on set of Steven's set. shoots. I'm with you. I, yeah, I learned about you. lighting, about movement, about kind of kind of taking on these characters um, and the whole process of it. He's such a phenomenal teacher and and, and gentle that, and, and, and so, so gentle, gentle and humble. Right. The best. I mean, the best. we're blessed that we had him teach us in the beginning of our careers. We're truly blessed. No question. I no mean, question. I hold that friendship so dear. Yeah, I love Stephen. It's for me. It's not about work. It's family. He yeah. knows me inside out. Thirty-four years of really close friendship. What did you think when you very first saw Stephen? I have to ask you this. What did you yeah. think when you saw him? What was he, what he, went through your mind? I mean, he's such a legend. I mean, he's larger than life. His kind of his legacy, his work. I mean, I'd seen images of you, iconic images of of you and of Stevens throughout, you know, long did before you I know, thought about modeling. Did you and know was, who he was? I, you know, I knew his work. I didn't oh. know him until like entered the industry. And it's, I mean, he's prolific. He has this ability to storytell through images and really, you know, I think for me, I, I danced ballet before I started modeling. Uh, and that was really a big kind of, I think the best education I could have had before I learning you. to model. It was, you, did, you did ballet too. I did, and yeah. it, didn't it help you to just like know how to pose? Oh, and how to like move. I mean, I feel like down to like, when you're a ballerina, you can control down to like the ends of your hair. You know, you're so aware of But that makes, now that makes so much sense because your essence of you is, I have to say this, your essence of you, I feel like you belonged in our era. I, I say that. Oh. I say that because of the designers that loved you, photographers that loved you, Steve and my zone one, Oscar de la Renta, John Galliano, Azina Liar, Alexander McQueen. These were yeah. all our generation de um, designers. Oh. When I say that, I mean, you know, in our yeah. prime. So I feel like you could have been with us. Even. I wish. Oh, Naomi, that's the greatest compliment. Thank you. I wish and I, you paved the walk. way. And different, for, for, no, no, your tallness. Let's go back to that. Yes. Your okay. How tall are you, Carly? I'm six foot two, which I only admit that now. I think I said 5'11 for a very long time. <laughs> but I'm, I'm basically six foot two, and I'm really tall. So I would always kind of close the shows with a big long gown because every, yeah. every designer knew that I could kind of carry it off um but yes working with those designers i mean it's the privilege of a lifetime i feel so lucky that i feel like i grew up in this industry and i feel so lucky that i got to work with someone like oscar de la renta or mm. lee mcqueen gentlemen and, you know you with with the, greats. Galliano. the greats so so then you after after that when when you were doing ballet did they ever yeah. tell you, because I was told this, and it, it, did a, it made me, tipped me for a second, and I thought, forget it, I'm not listening to her, that yeah. I was too, too, too tall to be a ballerina. Did you, were you yeah. ever told that? I was told that from when I was 13 years old. Because when, mm -hmm. 
when I was 13, I was probably 5'8 or 5'9 already. And I was told that I would never have a career as a professional ballerina, which was fine because that was never my intention. But I just, I think what I learned from ballet was actually how to, to love my body, how to stand tall and to actually yeah. kind of command presence with, with kind of just movement. And I think for me as a tall girl, which I really struggled with being so tall, my whole life. It's not like when I was 16, all of a sudden I shot up since yes. kindergarten. I was taller than all the boys. I was taller than all the teachers. Now, you have siblings, yes? I have three sisters. So, and you're the youngest or? So I'm the second oldest. Second oldest. But are four all girls. your sisters, is t are you all this, this very tall? They're all tall, not as tall as I am, but they're like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, yeah. So I remember once, I believe you told me something that they tried to stop you from growing. Yeah. How, I how, tried how to do stop you stop myself someone from growing? from growing? Oh my God, I was trying so hard. I thought like, I don't know what I, I thought, because um, I had heard all these things about how you could like, how people were helping themselves keep growing. But like, I would have given anything to, to stop growing. I, I remember trying to like put weights on my head and nothing worked. So, but you didn't, you, so like, it wasn't just something nothing. that you did. It wasn't something your parents did to you to try and stunt your growth. No, okay. no. Okay. If, that, if, I, if, that, if that was an option, I would have done it. <laughs> okay, so then off you went to Paris. I was soon mm -hmm. to see John Galliano, not John Galliano, another family, chosen family that we love. Yes. and. You were then closing his shows at what, 15 years old? So I met John a little bit later, probably when I was 16. And, mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, working with him was another real education, really understanding also references. You know, I think one thing that I really loved and had never experienced as a model before working with John Galliano was being brought into the, the story and the mm -hmm. whole kind of, because it wasn't just a runway show. It wasn't just walk to the end of the podium. And no, back. not at all. It, it was, it was you so had much, to perform. You, it was a performance. And it was so much about like just the richness of this story that you're entering into and that you're, that you're a part of. And he kind of also gave you the creative freedom to, to make express up yourself. parts of the story. Express and yourself. To, yeah, yeah. Which I loved, especially I for mean, the tour shows. I'm so yeah. happy that you got to experience those shows because so grateful. they're really very, they don't exist anymore, really. They do don't they? exist. I mean, you tell me, I don't do the shows like yeah. you do, one here or there. But well, what show would you say is the equivalent to that now? Honestly, I have never experienced anything like that, like a John Galliano Dior Couture show. And, and an Alexander me. McQueen, because and you, don't, Alexander you were McQueen. immersed into their world into their reality, you stepped out of reality into their fantasy and became that fantasy for two hours, three hours, however long yeah. you were there. And Naomi. it just doesn't, ex I miss those shows, don't you? Oh my God, I miss, that to me, also as a model was, it was, it was more challenging and exciting and interesting to, to kind of not just be a clothes hanger and walk you know, to the end it of pushed the line. You, it made you, you push yourself. It made you it, yes. see, like, get something, get you out of your comfort zone, get you to do something beyond totally. just. So tell there me was... about now, Carly, the girls that do now, the shows now. I mean, it's just a different paradigm now. It's, it's not the same. And that's not to say that there's not, in my opinion, the same kind of creative talent. I think there's so many creative young people, uh, somebody that we You're also talking about designers. With designers and you know I think the mediums are changing and I think we're at a really interesting kind of um, I don't know transition period where you know technology is rapidly changing every industry every facet of like the world and I think the way that people experience fashion and the way that people are inspired it is changing and I think that you know a uh, a traditional runway show is not maybe as impactful as it once was, and I'm, I'm curious see, to see where it's Don't headed. you want to see the models smile and 
Which one did you prefer to do? You prefer to do the John one or the Amazon uh, one where you could push yourself. You know, Naomi, there's then this one just store. Just straight and just have there's, a low face, oh, blank yeah. poker face. What do you call it? There's this one story that I um, that I've shared before, but I loved this show. Do you remember the Alexander McQueen show where there was the giant black trash pile? It was it was kind of trash spray painted fire. black. Yeah, I remember there was a fire after that show. Exactly, yeah. and I was wearing this big red long gown, and I had you know those big red lips, and you could hardly even tell it was me except for that I was so tall. And I was and I was wearing these giant platform shoes, and I was so nervous because my dress in this show was so long, and I kind of fumbled my way through the fitting, and I was at the show, about to walk out on the runway, and I, I look at Lee and I'm just petrified that I'm gonna ruin the show, and I say, Lee, I'm so sorry if I ruin your show, if I mm. fall or trip, um, please forgive me. And he said, Carly, you wear that dress, you own that dress, that dress does not own you. So if, right. if, if you trip, take it and throw it. He said, make a moment out of it. And so, that I, so I did that. And I oh, I've got to go back and watch that. I'll send it to I you. I mean, please, but you had so many moments like that. I'm, I'm sure it was absolutely fantastic. I'm just envisioning it as you're speaking about it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, another. I mean, again, those type of shows. Anyway, yeah. moving on. So, Calvin Klein, then to Paris, John mm -hmm. Galliano, then. I lasted as my last show of Azlina mm. Lyle, Azlina Lyle's last yes. show. I did it with you. And yes. I'm so happy that you were there. How lucky um, were we? <laughs> oh. I'm so was... happy to be there with you. We Ooh, didn't know think... it at the time, did we? No, none of us had any clue that that would be his last show. And I, you know, I cherish that experience and I feel so lucky, you know, that I he We're only... talking about Azadina Lyo, everyone, who was my papa since I was sixteen and he absolutely yeah. adored Carly. So I mean Very out nice. of the newbies, you are one of his newbies babies. Thank you. you. I know he dressed you for the Mets. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, so and that. the Oscars Beautiful. and Naomi, I you know, I for me as a young model and just being in this industry, I mean I, I felt the how just the being in his atelier, the those walls, if they could talk, the kind of history that they had seen, the fashion history they created. I mean, you you grew up from you know the the stories that I hear. You spent so much time in that atelier in Paris. And, and what's really know, lovely about talking with you now is that you, out of the next generation or the next generation generation, got to experience. A lot of things that I also yes. did with the designers and getting to see their yes. creativity and how they worked. Because a lot of your girls, a lot of the girls at your age and your generation wouldn't, didn't have that experience. So you truly understand no. the workmanship that I goes feel behind so what lucky. they do. It's really crazy because I started in 2007 when I was 15 and it was kind of, it was right before the 2008 recession and you know the whole world certainly changed but i think that was kind of the beginning of of the change in tides in a lot of ways kind of 2010 certainly social media i think played a big role in changing the world but you know i do feel really lucky that if i wouldn't have started my career at 15 and at that time i would have never had those experiences and um you know Azadine was just such an extraordinary soul and and you know he never spoke a word of English but I had like I have pretty bad friends. I'm so I happy just, that it warms my heart that you got to experience yeah. all these greats because the best. I think you're I think you're probably the last of your generation of girls that got to experience the greats because I don't think a lot of those yeah. girls now today that you work with on the on the fashion shows got to so you you should okay. always treasure that that's why i say you belong to us thank <laughs> you belong in our best generation. compliment i could ever ask for thank you but you're the best of both you've got your young age and you've got the experience <laughs> so i wanted to ask you this i want to mm. switch into your philanthropy because carly one of the first yeah. memories i have of you is you sending me cookies carly's cookies <laughs> 
Oh, and I love you, Amy. They were really good, and you couldn't have given them to me a better time. I remember we were running between shows, and I needed that sugar. And <laughs> they were so, I mean, Thank how you, you did that to bake the cookies between the fashion weeks, I don't know. But can you tell us <laughs> yes. the whole reasoning behind the Carly's cookies? Yes. So I, I mean, I've always loved, you know, I think it's the Midwestern girl in me. I love kind of showing appreciation and gratitude uh, through a home baked good. So I would bake cookies for everyone. When I would show up on set, I would bring a plate of warm baked cookies. And Grace Coddington actually on a Vogue shoot one time said to me, Carly, stop bringing cookies. You're gonna, you're making us all fat. Like, do something with this. <laughs> and seriously, no vision. And um, it was Fashion's Night Out, I think in 2008 or 2000, around that time. And yeah. Vogue was putting this big initiative together. And so I partnered with Christina Tosi from Momofuku Milk Bar, and we made this cookie, vegan, gluten free, and it was a basically a way to raise money. Um, yeah. And we ended up selling over enough cookies to donate over a million school lunches to children around the world just from selling these cookies and so it was kind of the first experience that i had taking something that i was passionate about and turning it into an entrepreneurial way to to help others to raise money for philanthropy so mm -hmm. you know that was uh, something that i really enjoyed and wanted to um to keep building off of and so then from there, how did it get from, from, from the cookies into yeah. coding? Walk so, me through that. So walk me through that because then I'm going to go back to your producer skills. So I want to know you're about so the, sweet. the coding. Thank you, Naomi. Um, so a little bit separate. So I, to go back to your earlier question, I kind of juggled my modeling career and my high school education kind of like Hannah Montana. This is like a reference for <laughs> kids of, you know, early 2000s. Like I had this double life. So I was modeling, traveling the world, but then also going back to St. Louis and finishing my high school education and going back to normal small town America and going to the lame high school parties or the football games on the Friday night kind of thing. And so when I finished high school, I took some time and fully focused on working. And at a certain point, I was really craving getting back into an education and some sort of educational environment. And so I applied to NYU. And while I was waiting to hear back if I got into NYU, one summer, six years ago, I took a coding class. And it was really just because, I mean, like you and I, I mean, we're around people who are best in class in so many different industries, but yeah. I was meeting so many entrepreneurs who had started tech companies like Instagram. Well, I keep and seeing I, you at all these conferences. I mean, this is, <laughs> since last year, I've been starting to go to these tech conferences and I see yeah. you at every single one, Apple Law, <laughs> Brilliant Minds, Google Camp, and Google. it's great. I'm so happy to see you because I'm like, there, like deer in the headlights. I don't know anyone. Yeah. And I'm like, this is really out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to do this. Same. I'm here. And in Aria's um, Lion Tree. Exactly. So, you know, and it's, I'm I, so proud to, of what you do. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we can combine with Africa. That's where I hope that we can. I love together. the work that you do. And I would love to find a way to work together. And, you know, I think one thing we're so lucky about, Naomi, is that, you know, our I've always looked at my career as a model as such an amazing opportunity to experience the world, to travel, to meet people who are best in class in so many different industries mm -hmm. and meet so many fascinating people. And I think that f for me, I really try and take advantage of, of always pushing myself to learn new things and meet new people. So mm -hmm. those kind of conferences I find really fascinating and, um, and, and I love that we get to do it together. Um, I know. I, I'm really enjoying them. I mean, I loved your last talk. Thank you. I, I, I loved on the 3rd of March. I loved it. Thank you. I know before all this happened, it's so crazy well, who how knew? quickly who the knew? world changed. <laughs> and then, so let me skip to now, how has it been a producer for you and Project Runway? I've been in your shoes, but I yes. wonder how a yeah. little different when I did the face it's a lot of pressure, yes. but I wonder how do you cope with it all? Plus, oh me, gosh, so you're the producer and the judge, right? So I'm an executive producer and the host at, on Project Runway uh, on Bravo. Excuse and me, sorry, I mean, host. 
you and Naomi are the queen of all things. You've done it all. So listen, you're it's quite a compliment. But I, I, I honestly, I honestly have to tell you, I was really when I first heard reality TV, I was like, not interested. Yeah. Not yeah, interested. Same. And then when they came with the face, because I love yeah. Liz Murdoch, and I said, all right, I'll look at it. But just, it's about the skills and the opportunity that they can get, right? That's why yes. I did it. That's the same thing. I wanted to, so with Project Runway, which uh, I have the privilege of doing with Brandon Maxwell, Christian Siriano, Elaine, who you also And know both well, of these two Nina designers, Garcia. just one second. Aren't both of these two designers being asked by United States of America to make masks? Yes, they're doing incredible work to support our heroes on the front line. And they both have kind of pivoted uh, their efforts and their team to help make masks at this time. And I think it's amazing to see the way that they're they're stepping up. Uh, and they're, I think, two really just bright stars of the next generation. Um, I so know I'm you're really close proud with Brandon. And, I, I, and you've made, he's made some exquisite yes. designs on you. And I just love him because he's such a doer. And you know what? I didn't know that Brandon was an intern or was an assistant at Azina Liar. Did you know that? No, I knew he worked yes. at Edward and Fall. And, and, and he worked at Papa's because, really? I mean, it makes wow. sense now. Like, because wow. when I, I had to give Brianna an a MTV award, like, yeah. I don't know, three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. and. No, three years ago. And Brandon, I called him like the night before. I said, I'm coming into New York from LA and I don't have a dress. Brandon came and made the dress, something that pa I could imagine Papa doing, made the exactly. dress on my dining table exactly. for that night. Pat was oh there, Jimmy, they all just got me together and got me out the amazing. door. But he's amazing. He's amazing. And he has the biggest heart. The the one year I went to the Met Gala and wore a dress that he created and for the after party he literally took scissors and just chopped it off into like a little mini dress and that's I went off to the after party. Oh so party. he's like, used to doing this like. Yeah. <laughs> but he's very much, I think he has a lot of kind of that same just love of women that Azadeen certainly did of wanting to create you know fashion that really celebrates the female form and and makes women feel beautiful and love mm. their curves love their body um i think brandon does oh you have to about ask him about papa ask him I, i'm surprised he I didn't will. tell you that I yeah i mean he's a special a special baby brandon yeah so you like in the producing are you finding that you find a lot of great talents yeah i've loved kind of taking on this new role like you naomi you know i love kind of challenging myself, trying new things, you know, executive producing for this first time um, was a new challenge, but I really loved it because when I get involved in something, I want to be a part of all, all aspects of it. So cr coming up with the creative for the kind of challenges that the designers were going to work on, thinking about how to use this show and this platform as a way to really reflect what's happening in the industry in real time, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I, I grew up, like I said, in the middle of the country watching Project Runway when I was a kid and watch, you know, that was my window into the world of New York and the world of fashion. Yeah. And, and it really helps you dream and, and to see this other kind of just the possibilities of, of this creative industry that we get to work in and so oh, we, we're on season two now right we're on uh we're gonna yes we just finished season two so it's about it will of. come out yes it's so it's out now it's out now okay so yeah as you know i am doing uh making the cut yes. i'm a judge only it's heidi and tim show and I can't wait to um, watch it. it's like you know I mean, I know people think I'm mean. No. But I'm not mean, Carly. I'm just like. You're not mean. Listen. You're just the I opposite. want them to understand how competitive it is yeah. out there. They got to hear it, the truth. I don't sugarcoat anything. I never had anything sugarcoated. I want them to step it up each week. And I don't believe to sugarcoat them is going to help them get there. So I, I tell it to them straight. But I care. I do care. Of course. Um, I think to have these prizes today is. It's a big deal. Like Huge. they get these one million dollars from Amazon platform. How many millions of people they get to reach? So exactly. I do like these shows for that reason. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I think that you know the big 
prizes also beyond just ca cash and capital to kind of fund their business, but mentorship, I think is such a core yeah. kind of part of building a business and starting a career as a designer. Mm -hmm. You know who I was thinking about? Um, just, you know, I am so lucky that I got to kind of start my career when I did, but so did Jordan Dunn, who's one of well, my she's dear your friends. Twin, no? She's my birthday twin. We both are August 3rd babies. And she, um, she also, you know, we got to experience so many amazing things together. So I feel like I met Jordan. She did a Top Shop show yes. for Kate Moss. Um, when it was Kate Moss's line um, mm -hmm. for Top Shop at Annabelle's. And wow. I went backstage after to say hello to her because there's something so beautiful, elegant oh. about Jordan. Yeah. And I wanted to go and meet her, and she was so sweet. I mean, you know, yeah. again, I haven't seen Jordan. I hope she's safe and well, and her baby boy and her family are good. But I know that you two are very close. I love her. I feel so lucky that, you know, it, it, I think to the point of um, being able to have these experiences in this industry, I feel like I have a fashion family, and I know very much you do as well, and I feel lucky that you're part of my fashion family, and you've always been such a, an amazing big sister and looked out for me. And well, I just it really love is. that you do your thing. You do your yeah. fashion, but you do your thing, and I, I you know, Thank you, you. you're breaking, you're doing a lot of first in what you do, breaking boundaries. The way you're doing it with the coding is absolutely amazing, but it really is the, what, what the world's going to be doing. You're right, Thank you, you look to the future, which is absolutely so smart. Thank you, Naomi. Well, that's kind of what I'm really focusing on right now while we are in this kind of quarantine time, especially. So this summer is when we run the majority of our programs for Code with Fossey. Mm -hmm. So to finish the story I was telling you before, I took a coding class six years ago and it really opened my eyes to the fact that this ability to code is a skill set that's similar to a language and with that skill set, you can take an idea and build it into an app or a website or a product or a service that can scale to millions of people. And, and that was a really profound kind of aha moment for me to realize that this can be learned by anyone. And the fact that there aren't enough young women who have access to these kind of opportunities or are encouraged to go into these industries. And that's, in my opinion, why you know we're in the situation where we are today, where so many tech companies have such a disproportionate amount of men and women on their engineering teams and not because they don't want 50 50 kind of representation in their engineering mm -hmm. teams but there just isn't the pool of talent and to mm -hmm. me that was a moment of realizing okay i have millions of young women that are following me on social media and i really have been so fascinated by learning these coding skills i think these right if I could point young women in any direction, it would be to learn these skills and realize how just valuable they can be in, in your life. And so five years ago, I started Code with Classy, and we are going into our fifth summer, and we're going to have 1,500 well, young women. I remember coming to your office, your yes. office downtown, and you had, you, yeah, and you had um, all the plot, the, I don't know if you was, if that summer you were going or you'd done, all the cities that you were done, that's a coding, and I was just like, "Yeah, wow!" Do you remember that when I came up? I had, do, of had, course. Like, a map. Yeah, a map. So we've had, we now have probably three times as many cities as we did that summer. I think we had twelve cities that we had camps in that summer, and mm -hmm. this this uh, summer we have many more. And actually, it's really exciting because now, beyond just teaching teenage girls how to code, we also have a partnership with Teach for America, and we teach teachers how to code. And That's then we fantastic. pay them to be a part of our camps. So it's this kind of ripple effect. Um, we gotta go. We gotta go to the globe. Honey. I know. We, need to. we gotta do Africa. It. The Let's continent do. needs it too. Let's I mean, do something together, Naomi. I mean, it's there, but I mean, yes, the, the masses. You know what I mean? Yes. Let's work together. So let me ask you something. I'm, in a way, I feel like you also are very much in a business sense in the modeling because you change the different way of dealing with agencies you have someone that works for you yeah. and you then deal with the agent can you explain to me a little bit how it was because when you told me that yeah. i was like i love this girl she is <laughs> doing her thing and she's doing it right because that is the way to do it 
Thank you. It's been a learning process. You know, I did not, ha I didn't know how this industry worked when I first entered at 15 and I've been lucky to have amazing agents along the way. Stephen Lee is an amazing agent who helped me start my career. Love Stephen. And yeah. Love Stephen. And, um, and now I feel really lucky because I work with this woman, Penny Thau, who's an amazing manager who now I kind of structure my business um, that I, that I have my I work with IMG as my agent I have a manager and I have my team that helps me work on different projects year round. So how does it go? Explain, walk me through it. You book your jobs with Penny and then you give to IMG. So I yeah I mean I think what I realized really Naomi is that I and no disrespect to the agencies out there but like I as a model I don't work for anyone I work for myself. We're self-employed. That's right. And I think that's the thing that, you know, when you're a young model in this industry, I really had a lot to learn about kind of just commanding my own power. And that doesn't mean you have to be arrogant or, but just knowing your own worth and knowing your own kind of power and, and knowing that if my agent works for me, mm -hmm. not vice versa. That's I know, it made me while. laugh back in the day when they'd be like, Oh, she was fired. I was like, how can I be fired? I'm self-employed. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, I feel lucky. So it, this, it, this, this way of working, this method works for you. So you basically, you, your penny deals with your jobs for you. You then give the percentage to IMG. But everything exactly. comes to you and you're smart. But, but also I think like, Naomi, you're the same way. You're so entrepreneurial. For me, I, I love, you know, that I got to start my career on the runways and working with the greats and really being able to kind of be this silent muse. And I loved that. But I think at a certain point when the industry started to change and social media kind of brought in this new Absolutely. dynamic piece of being able to be more than just a face, but actually build a brand around yourself and your identity and own that. I think I really realized, started to realize my own worth and my own kind of opportunities mm -hmm. that I could build. Um, well, you've been a very much, you've been, the same. so you've been very much in connection and connected to your fans and yeah. speaking to them and answering them. So I've always felt that about you, not Thank knowing you. you much before. I always understood that you very much know who your people are that follow you and you're connected to them and you stay connected in, in a way that, you know, you work your social media. We, my era, we were like, well, I definitely can speak for myself. I was afraid of it. I said, I'm not going to do a tweet. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> it just seems so old. It's so intimidating. Plus yeah. the fact, it's a whole new world. You need help. I do have help. Yeah. I post my things, but it's, it's a lot. Especially with the jobs <laughs> now. They all want it too. You do the job, they yeah. want that part of it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny though, Naomi, because don't you feel like, and I, you better than anyone, you've seen the kind of evolution through the industry, through your career. And I feel like for me, there was such an interesting kind of moment of before and after of social media where I felt like it was the first time that I actually had a voice um, that, that like I could not just be seen, but also be heard as, mm. as a model. You know, I don't think that really existed before. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So may I just ask you this? You are converted to Judaism, correct? Yes. And it's actually, it's a holiday today. Or is there any other um, holiday? Last week, Passover. Yes. And I think today, because our dear friend that we share, Aria, told me, today yes. is a day of remembering the Holocaust. Yes, exactly. So it's a day of, you know, respect to those out there. Aria is and amazing as well. I mean, you know, when I saw you and your husband in Google Camp, and I told you, I go to Rabbi Lubavitch and I pray. Yes. He looks at me, your husband, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know, Naomi, I was like, wait, I can't believe you even have a rabbi. I'm so impressed. I mean, <laughs> he's not alive. Right. Um, but I go, to, I go to where he rests, and yes. I pray to Rabbi Lubavitch as I pray to Kaya, um, Kaya Moska, his wife. Um, I mean, we have Jewish in our family. My mother says my grandfather was Jewish, so we have it in our mm. family. Um, but it doesn't matter to me. It's what I, if I want, it's what I, 
I'm not in Kabbalah, but if I want to bless what I feel like doing, I pray to whatever makes yeah. me feel good, you know? Exactly. And I feel very much a sense of tranquility and peace. There's, some, there's a shift that happens. It's like every time I go to Israel, there's a shift. Yeah. I, it's when I leave. I can't explain it, but there's yeah. a shift. Did you grow up very religious or spiritual? Um, my family are um, Jehovah's Witnesses, my grandmother hmm. and the ladies in my family. Um, I grew up with it. It's not my choice of religion, but I respect yeah. everyone's religion across the board. As long as someone has a higher power and a faith that they know that yeah. gets them through, that's all that matters. I'm not, you know, I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. Like Serena and Venus you spoke, spoke to yesterday. They're... Jehovah's Witness as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I think the thing for me, I mean, the last time, by the way, I'm wearing purple today because I today love it. is the four years that we lost our genius prince, the artist mm. known as, uh, uh, the artist uh, known four as years Prince. Ago today. Roger well, Nelson. I have my yeah. purple here too. So. Yeah, so I wore purple in a tribute oh. to Prince. And one of the last things he ever said to me was in London when he did uh, like 30 or 40 concerts, the O2. He said, come here. We were all in the dressing room. He said, come here. I want to talk to you. He goes, I want to talk to you about the truth because he was a Jehovah's Witness. And I was like, it's not the right time to talk about this here, Prince. I know about this already. I was great. I was raised. <laughs> but yeah, today is Prince Day. So it's all proper wow. hearts. And I've been playing Prince music all day long. Wow. So tell That's me, Carly, amazing. what are you doing to stay home, to stay safe. Uh, what can you say to these young women who, there's two questions I'm asking you. Yeah. But have also, you've handled yourself in such an elegant way, which is one of the things I love about you. You're elegant, you're, you know, you walk with your sense of yourself. Like Lee said to you, you don't let the clothes wear you, you wear the clothes. What can you say to these young girls out there today in your time because mm -hmm. now you understand this social media world yeah. you understand the tech business a lot what would you what's what would you advice yeah. would you give to these young girls out there today i mean not just to young women in our industry but i think women all young women yeah. around the world mm -hmm. i think one lesson that i have uh, learned and continue to remind myself is to to kind of not limit your own potential and you know there really is no limit to what uh, this sounds cheesy but i really believe there's no limit to what we're you're capable of i'm capable of with and, and i think that there is this kind of um i don't know this kind of uh, just as a model certainly i i doubted my i've doubted myself uh even in kind of pursuing an education in tech and kind of questioning like myself i just i think like learning to realize your own power and to not yeah. question you question it not to kind of um, underestimate yourself i think is something that young women I, that i meet all the time struggle with and i think self-esteem they have issues self-esteem yeah mm -hmm. realizing just everyone it, it, like i really believe um you know, I can't wait for women. us to be in Africa together. I, I can't really wait as well. I think we can do some that. good. I would love I that. I think so. I want to congratulate you also because in my eyes, you're still a newlywed. <laughs> yes, I am. Congratulations on your marriage. Thank you. It's been 18 months now and it's flown by and I feel your so lucky. Your husband's lovely. Been... You're a great couple. He's, he's amazing, and I feel so lucky. He's my life partner, and um, yeah, it's, he's amazing. That's Almost eight wonderful. years we've been together. It's crazy. It's fantastic. It's crazy. Wow, it's wonderful. And I want to say something. There was something you and I spoke about when I came to your mm. office, and I truly believe we need to let that, we need to follow through with that. Yes, I, I think, don't think time I is now. About it. Don't think I'm I think it's about good. It. I think we should continue. continue. Yes. I agree. Yeah, because I've got you. Actually, once we're out of quarantine, you can come over, yes, and I will exactly. show you because I've added so many more things to it. You need to see it, and then okay, we can really speak. Now we've got lots of people we can go to that can give us guidance.
Exactly. So, yes, I would. I think we should follow through with it. I'd Everyone love to watching right now is so curious what we're talking about. What Let's are just we wait. talking it's about? It's worth the wait. Don't we're not going to tell. Don't them. taste it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Carly, I just wanted to say I thank you, and will you just give a lovely message to? everyone out there about staying home and staying safe. I want to say thank yes. you so much for your time for today and being yeah, able to do no filter with Naomi. I love yeah, you man. and so it all of all that you're doing. Thank you. I love thank you. Thank you. you for having me on no filter. This is, I love tuning in every day and everyone watching, I hope you stay safe and healthy and I'm sending you lots of love. Love you. Thank you so much. Love my you, darling. Thank you. Bye bye.